Hey everyone, um, it's Thursday morning, 4.47, I still can't this is Wednesday, I would have done it earlier, but, um, I it all day and then it got dragged out in the drawers, which I sort of wanted to go to anyway, but, yeah, this week we are talking about books and movies, so, without further ado, I'm going to stop, I've got a bunch, <laughs> this is Exquisite Cops, this is one of those horribly, really, really violent, erotic books, I guess you put it. It's about gay serial killers, next to the X, um, bug chasing, I guess, maybe. It's HIV, it's very harrowing. Chelsea mentioned this already, this is the perks of being a wallflower. I love it. And you may notice that this is the other way around, that's because I flipped it. Because otherwise, I could just getting the fingers wrong around. Yeah, it's about, there's a gay character in it. He's the one main guys, and his boyfriend's gay. Awesome thing. I haven't read it in a while. Mm. Boy meets boy. Chelsea mentioned this one as well. It's ridiculously unrealistic. Um, very well written, very quotable, as she said, but depressingly optimistic. You want this guy's life, nothing bad happens to him really. Well, obviously bad stuff happens to him, there's always been no buck, but... Mm, you know, I want to live in this town where he lives, where there's like gay people everywhere. There's more gay people than straight people in this town, I swear to god. Right. I wasn't sure where to put this one in. This is the Moth Diaries by Rachel Klein. Um, Chelsea mentioned that, as a rule, there aren't many gay characters in fantasy. This is the exception. Um, there's... Uh, it's got loads of sex. Not not sex, like sexual undertones, romantic undertones, it's all lesbian. I mean, most of the characters are straight, but the main character has a sort of quasi-lesbian obsession with her roommate. And uh, her roommate, at one point, has a a quasi sex scene with a girl who may be a vampire. And the other way it's written, you're not sure if she actually is a lesbian, but there's a lot of sexual undertones in the book. And hmm, God, I'm shiny. I just got in like 10 minutes ago, I want to do this before I go to sleep, and I probably won't go to sleep at this point. But yeah, this is the last one. I wasn't sure where to put this one in because they made a movie of it last year and they're remaking it in America and changing the name, as you do, because the Americans change the names of everything, apparently. And in the movie, they cut something out, which... They've cut a few things out in the movie to cut down on the LGBT thing. They've done it to cut out on another theme, which I can't go into, as well as guess, and I can't really tell you why. It says, Love the Right Wing, by John Ajvi Lindqvist. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Swedish. But this guy, um, he's really... He's about 12, he gets bullied a lot, and uh, he makes friends with the mysterious new girl, Ellie, next door, who turns out to be a 200 year old vampire, and I want to know what to put this in, because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read it, because it's such a good book, it's the movie cuts out a lot of the good stuff, not well, obviously not good stuff, but, you know, yeah. And this is the last one, this is the manga, actually, it's just a guy in no cheese, this is my current obsession. Um, I know, I don't think, I'm on volume 5, there's 7 out so far in Japan. I don't know if this ends at 7, I don't know, but it's about this game they play in the ruins of Tokyo after World War 3 and they fight to the death. And everyone's gay. And it's based on like a BL game, which just means boy love, and you have to get the main guy who is the guy of your choice. Yeah. And, yeah, it's really good. Now, LGBT movies. Um, yeah, this is the only one I actually own, really, and it's terrible of me, besides like, the, the movie of the German in. It's probably more, but yeah, this is Hedwig and the Angry Inch. It's a musical, stereotypically. It's about this. Um, gay guy in East Berlin who has a sex change to escape 
East Berlin and get over the Berlin Wall, which is still up at this point, and it gets botched and leaves him with a stump called the, his Angry Inch. And like a year later, the day the Berlin Wall falls and his husband leaves him, so you know, he starts a rock band and it's very good. Um, while we're on, I have to get back to books now, okay? That's all the stuff I've actually got, but there's a few books I ha have to mention anyway. There's one, which is The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. It's ridiculously violent. It's the only book I've ever wanted to give up reading because it's so violent, but it got to the point where there was a castration scene, and it was written from like the point of view of the guy who's doing the castrating, and he's got, he's, it's his fantasy. So it's re written really sexually and it's really uncomfortable to read uh it's not so sort of book it's sort of book you'd read you'd read again i guess but you would you couldn't read it often it's like martyrs watching martyrs you know it's not that violent but it's disturbing very disturbing and the other one is hero by perry moore which is a tv show which i can't wait um it's about a gay superhero it's really amateurishly written unfortunately um the, it's, he saves the world, which is a good thing, because in gay like comics and stuff, you don't actually get much. The Young Avengers, I think, is the exception because they were written in the same mindset. But usually, the gay characters die or get castrated, like physically or metaphorically. Um, yeah, I'm actually writing. I'm in the middle of writing one right now. When I say I'm in the middle of, just started it a few weeks ago. And I got a lot of ideas in my head for a few more LGBT books. That's one of them, the one I'm writing now, I've mentioned my first one. Um, there's another one, which is a guy who tries to kill himself, and then um, his ex-boyfriend tries to figure out why. And yeah, um, there's another one again um, about this guy who runs away to Connecticut to find his family after like his mother dies in the fire and um he gets taken in by this not well not taken in this guy lets us sleep on his couch and it's this sort of sweet romantic story and yeah i've seen the movies again um i will sometimes i write i can't decide i write things but i write them as books and if i feel like it i write them as movies but usually i tend to write them as books yeah, but um, I am I'm working on a helping my friend write her screenplay, which is about a world where homophobic homosexuality is normal and heterophobia is normal. So heterosexuality is just like basically switch the sexualities around. I mean, I'm helping her write it and I'm directing it. I'm assistant directing all this stuff. I'm assistant directing. Um, this short movie, Incarcerated Reality, and that's about, like, the sex trade. And, um, yeah, I'm listening to quite a lot of stuff right now. Or oh, coming up. Hmm. And I'm also writing a screenplay called Love Bug, which is about bug chasing. Very dewy. Hmm. Right, I've got 8 minutes and 40 seconds in. I've rambled on too long. Chelsea's like 2 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, random fact of the day. Saint Nicholas, or as we know him, Santa Claus, was the patron saint of thievery, communist Russia, and another one I want to say was prostitution. No, I can't be. Something along those lines. Well, thievery and communist Russia, you know, you wouldn't think Santa would be the patron saint of those. Hmm. Ooh, and also, I think I shall end with a quote that I got from a poem. I can't remember the name of the poet or the name of the poem. But the quote goes, Grow your own garden and decorate your own soul. And stop waiting for someone to give you flowers. Don't lie on yourself. Don't lie on other people. Don't. You can't be happy with someone else and leave you happy on your own. Stop expecting other people to make you happy. Because that's how you get depressed. This is a raspberry signing out. Mm.